The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Since the Equitable Life Assurance Society was founded 90 years ago, this country has changed in many ways. But in one respect, it is still the same. In those early days, people always spoke of America as the land of opportunity. Well, it still is the land of opportunity just as much as ever. In just a few minutes, in tonight's middle commercial, the Equitable Society will have a special message for listeners who agree with this philosophy. We will describe a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up, offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Telltale Ransom. It is impossible to make any review of the field of crime and not feel genuinely concerned over the number of criminals who are not only free, but who are operating in almost every large city in the country. They run gambling houses, horse rooms, or control the numbers racket. In some cases, they are able to operate because of local political protection, protection which enables them to escape public censure by occasionally sacrificing a menial in the organization to the police. That makes the records look good. In other cases, it is simply a matter of the local police being undermanned, underpaid, or both. Whatever the reason, though, the fact is that there is a criminal population throughout the country, and through their various enterprises, they are bleeding the public of money it can ill afford to throw away. Tonight, we have selected a file for dramatization which will give you an insight into one particular type of criminal operation by telling you the story of the men who conceived and completed that operation, kidnapping. Tonight's file opens in a cemetery located on the outskirts of a large Midwestern city. It is late at night and the eerie quiet is broken only by the sound of two men digging. Sure it's here, Joey. Uh-huh. We've been digging for 20 minutes. Yeah, I buried it here myself. All right, then find it yourself. Okay, I will. Hey, I got it, Perky. Right, let's see it. Wait till I get it out. Give me a hand, will you? It can't be that heavy. It's stuck. Now, wait. Yeah. There you are. Go ahead. Open it. Wait a second. Oh, Don't look bad, huh? There's a thousand in each bundle. Yeah, you take out ten bundles. Right. Two, four, six, five, ten. Now give me the rest. How about my Marcus? You want him tonight? Yeah. I'll come back to the joint with me. Okay. Uh, Joey. What? One thing. Wait six months before you spend that 10 G's. Why? It's still too hot. Guy who gets caught spending that stuff could get himself thrown in a jug or in a river. A few days later, at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is at his desk when Agent Lou Mitchell approaches. Jim Taylor? Yes, that's right. 
Lou Mitchell. I just signed in this morning. Oh, I heard about that, Lou. It's nice to see you. Same here, Jim. SAC assigned me to work with you. Oh, it's fine. Which office you from, Lou? New Orleans. Ah, you're just in time to start on a new case, or I should say the reopening of an old one. What kind is it? Kidnapping. Four months ago, a man named Frank Stillwell was kidnapped. He was the uh, local policy king. Oh? His wife got a ransom note asking for $50,000. She took it to the local police who sent her here with it. Oh, uh, you were on the case then? That's right. We naturally told her we would do nothing to jeopardize her husband's safety, so she decided to pay the money. Uh Uh-huh. She got it from her bank, and we made a list of the serial numbers on the bills, then she arranged to make the payoff. Oh, what was her husband's story after he was released? Well, they never did release him, Lou. body was found a few days later. Oh? He was killed by bullets from a 7.65 millimeter Luger. Not many of them around anymore. No, no, they aren't. Well, we questioned five suspects, racketeers. We got nowhere with them. Since then, we haven't gotten a single break until today. What happened today? One of the ransom bills showed up in a delicatessen on the north side. The clerk had clipped the list of serial numbers from one of those crime magazines. Did he know where he got the bill? Yes, from a Miss Inez Whitfield. She lives at the, uh, where's that? Oh, here it is, at the Austin Apartments. Lou. Yeah? Why don't you get out the Stillwell file and go over it, huh? I'm going over and find out where Miss Whitfield got that money. <laughs> Hi. Did you stop for some candy? Mm Mm-hmm. Here. Oh, thanks, honey. I know I shouldn't eat it right after lunch, but these are my favorites. Oh. Inez. Hmm? What'd you call me for? Mm, It was on account of the cops. What cops? Oh, these are awful good, weren't they? Inez, what cops are you talking about? The one that was here. Hmm? There was a guy up here this morning. What kind of a guy? From the FBI. FBI? What do you want? Where'd you get that money you gave me? I want it in the crap game. Why? It's hot. And as will you please tell me what this is all about? The money you gave me was part of the ransom money in the Stillwell kidnapping. What? That's what the FBI guy told me. Put that candy down for a minute so I can understand you. I said, that's what the FBI guy told me. Well. What's the matter? I didn't think he'd do it. Honey, where are you going? I'm going to try to find somebody. I'll see you later. Studying the Stillwell file, Lou? Just about finished with it. Uh, Find anything that we overlooked? Oh, only one thing. Hmm? All I could find after the date the body was discovered was a single statement from Miss Stillwell. Oh, she refused to see us or the local police. Why? Well, my guess is that the kidnappers threatened her life if she talked. Oh, you think she might talk now? Well, she's not even in the country anymore, Lou. Huh? Yeah, she went to England. She's going to live there. Oh. Well, how about you? Did you get anything from Miss Whitfield? <laughs> Very little. She didn't have the slightest idea where she got that bill. Because, well, to use her words, she's been on a mad shopping spree. Well, you've got to go on a shopping spree with large bills to get 20s in your change, Jim. Well, there's not much chance of proving she doesn't. I suppose you're right. Lou, I'm going to go in and see the SAC. What about? If it's all right with him, I'm going to question every one of the old suspects. The number is seven. Pay to come and take the line. Next shooter. Step back, boys. Make room for the players. Remember, boys, you can't accumulate unless you speculate. Bet a lot, win a lot. New shooter coming out. The point is nine. Three to two on a nine. Don't get shut out. Get your bets down. Here he comes. Eight the hard way. Pay the eight. Fergie. Huh? I give the stick to one of the boys. I want to talk to you. How about later, Gene? I want to talk to you now. Okay, yeah. Hey, Tommy. Yeah? Here's the stick. Take the game for one. Sure. All right, let's go back to the office, Gene. Okay. Okay, man. You got a new man to shoot against. Break me. Go ahead. What's on your mind? I'll tell you when we get inside. Go ahead, Gene. Thanks. 
grab a chair. Yeah. Now, let's have it. We, um, had a crap game at my house night before last. Running competition to me, Jim? This was just a couple of the guys. Oh. I beat Joey Stevens for a chunk. It uh, turned out to be hot money. Now, what's that got to do with me, Jim? I know he hangs around here a lot. He ain't been in tonight. I've been here since we opened. What was the money hot from? Remember when Frank Stillwell got snatched? Uh-huh. Joey went to a cemetery to pick up the dough. He came back with no money, just a satchel full of paper. That's uh, what he said he got. Were you in on that job? I don't remember, Fergie. Where's Joey living? I don't know. I'll tell you what I'll do, Gene. I'll try to locate him. As soon as I do, I'll call you. Who's there? It's me, Joey. Who's me? Fergie. Oh. Uh, come on in, Fergie. How come you're not working? Uh, there was a guy at the joint looking for you. When? A little while ago. Well, who was it? Uh, Gene Russell. Oh. He tells me you shot crap with him the other night. Yeah, yeah, I... I went for a glob. Yeah, so I understand. He threw eight straight passes. Joey, he was in on that Stillwell snatch, wasn't he? Yeah. And it wasn't very smart of you not to remember what I told you. When? The night in the cemetery. I said the money was too hot to spend. It could get a guy in trouble. You, you should have listened to me, Joey. I couldn't help it. If Russell finds out I have 40 Gs of that money, he's going to get mad at me. Well, nobody's going to tell him. That's what I came up here to ensure. What do you mean? Joey, I... Well, I'm gonna have to kill you. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now... A special message to a very special kind of person. Next Tuesday, March 15th, is the final day for income tax returns. Here and there in America are men and women who, as they drop their tax returns in the mailbox, will say to themselves, It won't be long before I'll be paying a tax on a bigger income than I get today. And sooner or later, I'm going to make the top brackets. I'm on the way up. Is that the way you feel about yourself? Is your confidence in your future success firm and unshakable? Then you're sure to be interested in the Equitable Society's special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up. Yes, this plan appeals to the successful men of tomorrow because of three important features. First, immediate protection. The moment you sign the contract, you enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing that your wife and children have the protection they need. Second... The equitable plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. In other words, your life insurance keeps in step with your income. Third advantage, the equitable plan is flexible at all times. It can expand or contract as you see fit and offers you many desirable options which your Equitable Society representative will be glad to explain to you. So why not get in touch with him immediately? Phone him and ask for full details on the Equitable Plan for People on the Way Up. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Telltale Ransom. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is an organization which attacks the job of fighting crime from the scientific rather than the emotional angle. 
The solutions to crimes come because certain facts align themselves and point a steady finger at one particular suspect. One of the things it is important for a special agent investigating any case to know is the motive behind the crime. As their study of the field continues, it has become more and more apparent to the members of your FBI that murder, to mention one crime, is committed for only a small variety of reasons. Profit, passion, and revenge top the miniature list of motives in that order. It is possible to catalog the reasons behind the more than 7,000 murders committed in this country last year. It is impossible, however, to answer another question concerning those killings. That question is, what type of person committed the murder? No matter how much experience any law enforcement officer has had, it is impossible for him to answer that question because there is no pat answer to it. Some of the killers were rich, some poor. They came from every section of the country and every conceivable background. They had little in common except one thing. Each believed he had the right to take another person's life. The fact that in the eyes of the law virtually no reason is sufficient for murder made little difference to them. And each of them, in addition to killing, was also guilty of stealing. Stealing for himself a motto which once belonged exclusively to a late dictator. A motto which reads, I am the law. Tonight's file continues at the local FBI field office. Lou, we've got four of the five suspects in the Stillwell case. Have you questioned any of them yet, Jim? No, we're waiting to get them all. Who's missing? Joey Stevens. Oh, he's the one who said he was at the State Theater the night of the kidnapping. Yeah, that's right. And he had ticket stubs that were sold that night to prove it. When did he move from the address we have on him? Oh, about a month ago. Oh. Jim, uh, hmm? we got an answer back on that request you sent to Scotland Yard on Mrs. Stillwell. No? What did it say? Well, she was located, but she refused to talk. Yeah. Well, I think that angle of the case is hopeless now. She... Oh, I've got it, Luke. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. You have? Where? Will you... Will I write that down? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. 82nd Street. Fine. Thanks very much, Sergeant. We'll get right over there. Lou, there was Sergeant O'Reilly at headquarters. They've located an address for Joey Stevens. Good. Let's get down there. Hey, new shooter coming out. Get your bets down. Here he comes. The number is 10. Two to one plane and eight to one the hard way. Bet a lot, win a lot. Bets down. Here he comes. Natural seven. Pay the come and take the line. Next shooter. Step back, boys, unless you're gonna play. Hello, Fergie. Hi, Gene. Want a little action? I want to talk to you. Gene, I can't leave the game every time. I said I want to talk to you. Okay. Uh, Tommy, take the stick and run again. Sure. Come on, Gene. Two man with a stick, boys. Go ahead, Gene. Thanks. Seen Joey yet? No, I haven't. I didn't think you would. What do you mean? You don't want to. Gene, I give you my word. I sent Tommy out last night, and I went looking for him myself today. He just ain't around. I ran into a guy named Paul Carroll. You know him? No. He's a friend of Joey's. Huh? Joey showed him something yesterday. $40,000 worth of markers. Every one of them was signed, paid Fergie. Oh, damn uh, they were from a game. He ran up a $40,000 tab, finally paid it back. Why didn't you tell me about it last night? I didn't remember. A guy like Joey Stevens pays you 40 Gs and you don't remember? Look, it ain't any of my business where Joey Stevens gets his money, is it? Not unless you're in on the deal, too. What are you talking about? I'm going to find Joey Stevens. When I do, I'll explain it to you. <laughs> This apartment, 317 here. Stevens must have the next one on this side. Yeah, I guess so, though. Yep, this is it. 
Hey, it's open. Come on, let's go in. All right. Well, I'm glad we brought that search warrant along. Yeah. Lou? What? No wonder the door was open. Take a look in here. Joey Stevens? Yeah. He's dead. Not too long ago, either. Look, he's still bleeding. There's a knife, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I see it. It might have some prints on it. Well, let's not touch anything around here till the corner gets you, huh? I wonder if there's a phone in here. There it is, right over there. Oh, yeah. Lou, you call the police, huh? I'll take a look around. Right. Police headquarters, please. Hello. FBI Special Agent Mitchell speaking. Yes. We're up at 313 West 82nd Street, apartment 315. Uh Uh-huh. Found a man stabbed to death. Name's Joey Stevens. That's right. Uh Uh-huh. Goodbye. They'll be right over, Jim. Well, look what I found in a shoe in the closet. Ransom money? Well, the top bill is. I checked that with the list. I assume the rest of it came from the same place. Jim, from what I saw on Stevens' record, he wasn't a big enough operator to handle the Stillwell kidnapping alone. No, I don't think he did. No, I also found these keys. They're for a safe deposit box. Oh. Well, now all we've got to do is find the right bank. There's one on this corner, Jim. Hey, that's right. Lou, I'm going over there. Yeah. What's a commoner? A what? A commoner. How should I know? That's what the guy is. What guy? The guy the princess is going with. Inez, turn to the comics. Read those. But, Jean, how Let me have another piece of toast. Here. Thank you. And some more coffee. The pot's right in front of you. Oh, yeah. Jean. Yeah. Don't you know this guy? The guy that's going to marry the princess? No, this guy who's got his picture in the paper, Joey, Joey Stevens. What about him? He was killed. What? Cops found him last night. Let me see that paper. See? So he tried to keep Joey quiet. Huh? Never mind. Well, aren't you going to finish your breakfast? No, no, I'll see you later. Where are you going? To collect $40,000. Mr. Taylor is in the second room on the left, Mr. Mitchell. Just beyond the sign that says safe deposit boxes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I see you found the right place, Jim. Oh, oh hi, Lou. Yeah, I got a court order to open the box. I found another $4,000 of the ransom money. Anything else? Well, there's a sheet of stationery from the Hotel Central. It's the first page of a letter. Stevens? Yeah, it says, uh, Dear Joey... I got your letter. You don't have to worry about a thing. When you get out, you can step right back into your old job and make believe you never went away. Things are going pretty good, except that I had a mild beef with F.S. F.S.? That could be Frank Stillwell, Jim. Uh Uh-huh. Is that all the letter says? Well, that's all there is on this page. Second page isn't here. Hmm. Why would Stevens keep that in his safe deposit box? Probably because of this map here on the other side. Pretty crude map. I know this section, Lou. Where is it? It's the cemetery where Mrs. Stillwell paid the ransom. Oh, Joey must have been the one who collected. Yeah. Oh, Lou, you want to make a copy of this map on another sheet of paper? What for? So you can look around up there while I go down to the Hotel Central. I'm going to try and find out who wrote this letter to Joey Stevens. Come on, girl. Don't drink alone. Make one for me. Well, what are you so happy about all of a sudden? Remember what I said here when I left? You got it? Naturally. Oh, honey, you're a beautiful man. 
I'm 40 G's more beautiful than I was a couple of hours ago. You want me to carry it for luck? Uh, I ain't even had one drink yet. <laughs> Coming up. Thanks. You expecting somebody? Nah, you know better than that, honey. Answer it. Get rid of whoever it is. Okay. Then we're going out. We got some celebrating to do. Well. Hello. Oh. Honey, it's the man from the FBI. Huh? What do you want? I've come here for Mr. Russell. Me? Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you know we were friends? I saw your picture in his hotel room. What right did you have to go to my hotel room? A legally issued search warrant. Oh, I found something else in your hotel room, this Luger. If it turns out to be the gun I think it is, you'll be charged with murder. Gene Russell was tried and convicted for the murder of Frank Stilwell and sentenced to be executed. A similar sentence was imposed upon George Fergie Ferguson for the murder of Joey Stevens. When Special Agent Taylor arrived at the Hotel Central, he inspected a list of the hotel's guests. When he came to the name of one of the suspects in the Stillwell case, Gene Russell, he thought he had come to the right place. When he learned that a sample of Russell's handwriting matched the writing on the sheet of stationery found in Joey Stevens' safe deposit box, he was fairly certain that Russell was the man he had been hunting for. And when ballistics proved that the gun found in Russell's room was indeed the same gun which had been used to kill Frank Stillwell, Russell had no alternative but to confess. And so, another kidnapping was solved by your FBI. Solved some four months after it had taken place. It would have been solved if none of the ransom money had been spent for ten years. Because the Federal Bureau of Investigation does not close kidnapping files. Or any other kind. Until the job is done. Until the crime is solved. Until the criminal is brought to justice. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Tom, if I told you a certain man owns an equitable society policy for men and women on the way up, what would you say that indicated about him? Well, Mr. Keating, I'd say the chances are he really is on the way up. Exactly. That's why they say a man is known by the life insurance he owns. So, if you have confidence in yourself and your future, why not act accordingly? Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative soon and ask him to give you all the facts on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A factual account of a new and vicious pattern of crime. Its subject, swindling. Its title, The Baby Rattle Racket. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Carol Smith, Frank Albertson, Tom Holland, Frank Lovejoy, Sidney Miller, and George Offerman, Jr. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Baby Rental Racket on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>